Wix Stores is a simple to use app that helps you create an online store for your Wix website. It has all the basic features to get you started. However, there is one popular feature that is not available just yet. Adding a button to request a quote. I'm Code Kunayeli. Let me show you a solution that'll make this totally codable. Adding a request quote button is an existing feature request that can be found on the Wix Help Center. I recommend to vote for this feature if you get a chance. This is a popular request for websites that are using Wix stores as a catalog instead of a store that takes online payments. A catalog is usually to display images and information about products without displaying a price or without taking payment online. If you don't know how to convert a Wix stores into a catalog, please visit Wix Fundamentals YouTube channel so David can show you how that's done. The link to vote for the feature and the link to that YouTube channel will be down below in the video description. Let's begin by testing out the tutorial site that I created for you. I started with a simple one page template. When you click on shop, it will take you to the product catalog. When you click on a product, it will open up a product details page that Wix stores automatically creates for you. I added a button that says contact us for a quote. Clicking that button will redirect you to a form created from scratch using user input elements. Notice at the bottom of the form you will see the product image and description of the item that we were just looking at. If I click back to shop and select a new product, then click the contact us for quote, the new product details will refresh on the form page. Let me pretend I wrote the email incorrectly. Well, if I click on request quote, an error message will pop up. Let's go ahead and complete this with a fake email address. Click request quote, and it redirects me to a thank you. From here, I have another button that says view catalog. That way they can continue shopping. Now let's look at those notifications. From the editor, I'm going to visit my dashboard. From here, I will be able to view all of the new notifications for the quote request I received. If you're currently using the Wix mobile app on your Android or iPhone, you will receive all your notifications on your phone. I recommend you try it out. So now let's dive into the editor so I can show you how I created this. Through the site menu, we can go down to the store pages we're only going to be working with the product page. From here, you can style and design the product page however you like. Because this image and this information box stays in the same place, all I did was add a button on top of the other button that already existed. Now this button, I relabeled it contact button. You can do that from the properties panel. Right click and you can enter the new name. And on the bottom of the code page, there's a very simple code that gets the information of the product and redirects the person to the request form. I created a simple form and the URL ending is called quote. You can change this to whatever you like. Just make sure you update the code afterwards. On this page, I actually have different strips. The first one is a form strip. On here, I have set the settings to be collapsed on load because I'm asking the code to do a few things. I've added a data set that connects to the store's database. This store's database is automatically created by Wix when you add Wix stores to your site, and this is where you'll find the information. From here, I connected the data set to the products. Then I've added another data set I connected that to a write only function. I added several pieces of elements to create the form, connected each one to the corresponding place. If you don't know how to create a form, I recommend that you look up the Corvid Basics videos. These elements of the form are connected to the form data set. These other elements, which is just an image and a placeholder text, are actually connected to the store's data set. 
You can add more information if you'd like. All you have to do is add extra elements on the page and connect them accordingly. This request button is actually connected to the form for the submit action. Now you can connect it to a successful or failure message, but I decided manually connect this error text via code. Before I review the code with you, let me explain these other strips. This strip is my error strip. If by chance an error should happen when redirecting the person to this page, I want to be able to have an option to display an error. So here I added a simple message saying, sorry, an error has occurred with the product you selected. Please visit the catalog and try again or select a new product. And then the last strip is a success strip. This will show up after the form has successfully been submitted. Let's get over the code. Let me zoom in a bit. We're going to be using backend functions. We're using these two top functions because we're going to be sending a notification through the Wix platform to notify the website owner that a new form has been submitted. We're actually going to be storing the ID of the product through session storage when we're redirecting a person from the product page to this form page. Here the code says we're going to retrieve this product ID and from there I'm actually going to use the console log to log down what product ID they're reviewing. Then we're going to take the same product ID and set a filter to the storage data set. In my code, I've labeled it data set one. After it performs the filter, I'm going to expand the form strip because I don't want them to see the placeholder image and placeholder text before the filter has finished loading and it will collapse the error strip. Otherwise, if an error occurs, then the opposite will happen the form strip will collapse and the error strip will expand. Now I've added on before save function. So when the request data set, which is the one that's actually performing the save of the form, before it saves, I want to get the current item from the data set one, which is the stores item. I want to get the product name and the main image. And I'm going to set that as the fields inside of the form. I'm going to check if the first name is valid the last name field is valid, the phone and the email. Instead of dot value, I'm using the word dot valid in order to check validation to make sure that it was entered correctly. If all of these are true, then the request data set will perform the save and the error text message will hide. Otherwise, the error text message at the bottom will show and the save will return false. It'll cancel the saving process. Let's go over the database so you know where I'm inserting all of these values. I have a field called product name, and this is a text field. I have another text field called product ID, and I have an image field called product image. You don't need this field. You can actually get the product image from the products database, but let's say you receive the notification and you want to quickly view what the product looks like, then you'll have a small image here of that product. And of course, we have the text fields that are first name, last name, phone number, and email. Let's go back to the site menu, visit store pages, and let's go to the product page. The code is using storage session and Wix location because we're going to store a value and then redirect somebody to a different page. What I've done on the onReady function, I've added a code for the button so that way it performs an event on click. That means I did not activate any properties panel events on this button. I'm only using the code. I'm going to get the product page. In this case, my product page is called product page one. Yours will probably be the same. From there, I'm going to get the product. I'm going to get the product ID, and then I'm going to save it in session storage under the word product. After it does that, I want to redirect the person to a page with the URL ending that says quote. Make sure to update this to match your page URL. Now let's look into the back end so we can see what the back end code looks like. I added a notifications.jsw file. You do that by clicking on the plus sign and click new web module. Label it notifications, all lowercase. You will see that this function is called quote request and the title here, new tutorial quote, that can be changed to whatever you need. It's going to be sending the notification through the browser, dashboard, and through the mobile app. You can change the title here. You can uh, change the action title of the button. 
and then you simply add the URL to your dashboard if that's where you want to redirect yourself. When you receive that notification, you just click on it and it'll take you to the dashboard itself. Let me go click on the notifications, click on view it now, and then it redirects you to the correct page. Make sure you look at the video description. You can get a link to the tutorial site and a link to all the code. Thanks for watching and for subscribing to my channel. I'm Code Queen Ayeli, and this was another totally codable moment.